So the summary is that uh, we, we decided last year to create um, a uh, not-for-profit development group to, uh, to work on the Apache Arrow project, which I will tell you about. Um, there's a number of reasons why we decided to do this. Um, partly because the, the Arrow project does involve the R world, but it involves the Python world and many other programming language uh, ecosystems, and we wanted to be able to build uh, relationships um, in, with many different companies around the world that, that want uh, data science tools to become faster uh, and more scalable into the future. So, uh, so Hadley and I are the um, you know the leadership for the you know for the organization. Uh, we are now five uh, full-time engineers. So we've got uh, three people in North America, two people, uh, two people in Europe. Um, so Ben and Francois are here. So if you see them, uh, please say hello. Uh, folks from um, the Tidyverse team are, are involved on a, on a part-time basis uh, to work on the R side of things. Um, we are still hiring, so if you know anyone who likes to work on database systems or um, likes to do benchmarking and test and build automation, we have a lot of that to do, so please, please definitely um, get in touch. So... Um, you know, as Tarif was saying in his keynote earlier today, you know, our studio has been um, has been really, really amazing in helping uh, helping us get this off the ground by um, essentially, you know, making it so that I don't have the overhead of having to run a company. Um, can focus on doing software engineering. I used to work at Two Sigma. They're continuing to sponsor the work, and we've had um, Nvidia and also uh, the Open Data Science Conference join as as sponsors uh, for 2019. So NVIDIA just gave us some really high-end hardware to do uh, testing for, for the software. So that's been great. So the uh, executive summary of like, what this is all about is that if you look at how data science tools um, work now, like base R, um, you know, NumPy, SciPy, the Python ecosystem, MATLAB, a lot of the semantics of how these tools work um, are based on the way that computational systems worked in the 1980s and 1990s. So everything's built on a foundation of 30 to 40 year old um, Fortran code. Uh, you know, we, we have seen tools you know, augmented with you know, multi-core algorithms and some more, um, you know, uh, more sophisticated execution. But in general, you have things that are single core that, out, that evaluate eagerly. Um, the language ecosystems are pretty fragmented, so you very rarely see um, our programmers collaborating with Python programmers and sharing libraries of code to power their, power their applications. So, so the world that I would like to see is to be able to take advantage of all of this fancy hardware that we have now. We have graphics cards, we have computers. You can buy a desktop with 16 physical cores and 32 virtual cores, so you should be able to take advantage of that. Uh, we can compile code at runtime and generate custom functions that are specialized for your hardware. Um, but a big part also is that I would like to see the language ecosystems able to collaborate and share code and data. So one, one reason that not as much of this work has happened, happened yet has been because of Moore's Law. And you know, if your code runs slow, you can just wait because in a couple of years, your processor will be twice as fast. And that has essentially stopped happening, so we need to um, get more out of the hardware that we, that we have because it's not getting that much faster uh, year over year. Although we do have graphics cards which seemingly um, are you know, continuing to scale and have thousands of cores on a single, single graphics card. So the Aero project, um, so I helped launch the project about three years ago and our central idea is that we'd wanted to define a language-independent open standard for data frames. Um, and you might say, well, we have data frames in R and data frames in Python, but if you look under the hood how those, those data frames are implemented, how they are arranged in memory, they, um, the memory representation is very different. And so as a result of that, you can't really share code. And if you want to share data from one runtime environment to another, you have to serialize, which is very expensive. So essentially the, the view of the world that we would like to see is to have tools um, able to, cl to collaborate and work on a common data representation um, that is not tied to a particular runtime environment or programming language. 
So, um, kind of a, the bird's eye view, if you think, and where the, the project is going, and since I have zero time now, but um, we, what I, you know, what I would like to do and what we've, the way that we've been building the community um, is to bring together the data science world with the analytic database community. So a lot of the uh, performance and, and scalability work in working with um, big data, I don't know if we're still saying big data now, as has, a lot of that work has happened in the analytic database world and relatively little work has made its way into the data science ecosystem. And if you look at the way that database engines are built, typically you interact with them through SQL or some other front-end API, usually it's, usually it's SQL queries. But those queries then interact with a bunch of components that deal with uh, query execution, uh, in-memory data management, and interactions with storage and essentially you know, whether it's disk or cloud storage or, or whatever. So, so what we were doing in the Arrow project is building a set of high quality components that have public APIs that can be used as the basis of building different kinds of essentially embedded um, database engines that can be run on a laptop uh, or run kind of in a distributed uh, cluster. But we aren't really being prescriptive about the front end. So. If you want to build a database, you can build a database. If you want to build uh, a data frame library or build something that can be used by an R or Python programmer, you can do that as well. So we have three primary use cases, and I'm going to tell you very briefly about how this is relevant to our programmers. But the three, the three, the three big things that we're concerned with is getting faster access to data, so being able to read and write um, data sets in the most important file formats as fast as possible. Uh, we want to be able to move around data as efficiently as possible within uh, a single node, so between one process and another through shared memory, or moving data between nodes in a, in a network uh, through um, remote procedure calls, so through sockets uh, or other um, inter-node communication. The last, um, so the last thing is that we want to be able to compute analytics, and so if you're using R, you're using Python, you're already doing analytics every day when you use uh, data frame libraries. So these would be um, standardized libraries of algorithms um, that could be used in many different, many different scenarios. And we want to be able to take advantage of the latest and greatest in compiler technology to be able to do uh, specialization of functions to go even faster based on prior knowledge of what you're doing with your data. So how is this all relevant to R? Well, we, we are building um, uh, bindings for the Arrow libraries, which are mostly written in C++. So that work on the R side has been, been led, led by uh, Romain Francois, who you may know from the, the dplyr project. Um, so I won't talk about R data frames, because I have no time. But the, the key use cases where there's a lot of interest in the R world um, is being able to memory map and interact with very large on-disk data sets that don't fit into memory. Uh, we want to be able to, this is not about replacing dplyr or replacing data.table, it's about having um, tools that can be used to accelerate these projects while leaving the user interface, like with the code that you write, largely, largely unchanged. So, if you, you may know about dplyr, dplyr is already a domain-specific language where you write a sequence of dplyr verbs and, and expressions, and then those expressions are effectively compiled into whatever backend where dplyr is executing. So dplyr can execute in a, against SQL engines or it can execute using its in-memory um, in engine. And so, what our goal is to do is if you do have a very large data set which is coming out of uh, code in the Arrow ecosystem, whether it's memory mapped on disk data or maybe you have a directory of parquet files um, or you know, maybe a, a set of you know, cloud buckets that contain parquet files. So using dplyr, you, you may have an Arrow data set and a collection of dplyr verbs. And so we can translate these standard dplyr expressions into computation graphs that are evaluated by parallel runtime coming out of the Arrow project. And we can also do fancy things like look at um, non-standard evaluation, uh, kind of unevaluated R expressions 
So when you write this in dplyr, these expressions don't get evaluated immediately, but we can do, uh, use LLVM to compile these, uh, these expressions to go e even faster against, um, against the data sets. So, um, anyway, I'm sorry about the AV problems, but, uh, you know, these things, these things happen. Um, but anyway, there's, there's a lot of uh, interesting uh, things on the horizon uh, for, for the project, and I'm excited to collaborate with the R community um, getting the software into production and making your, uh, making your data science work faster uh, and more, more efficient and hopefully a little bit, a little bit more fun. Um, so many of you may, may be aware about three years ago we started the, Hadley and I started the Feather project, uh, which uses um, the Arrow technology internally. So another thing we'd like to see is a, uh, an evolved version uh, of Feather that has more features uh, and is faster and, and more efficient than what is, than what is there now. So even if you're already a Feather user, I mean, even that will be, um, will be improved eventually. So anyway, check out the slides and um, I'll be around the conference if you'd like to, if you'd like to chat. Thank you.